What's up, my friends? Welcome back to our blind let's play of The Witcher. Here we are with Geralt, and as you see, we're in Abigail's hut. I took the liberty of killing a shite ton of Vargas throughout the night, and I guess gathering some herbs off camera, so we have a good deal on us. We have... It looks like 56 on us right now, so it's like morning time, at least. Um, it's interesting because I seen as I was going through... Um, I guess the outskirts, and I was going through certain areas, not areas that we haven't unexplored, we explored every area here, but certain times the beasts would show up, and it would be a horde of, uh, Vargas that he would kind of send towards us, which was pretty interesting. We couldn't fight the beast, um, yeah, so that's that, but here, we're here in, uh, Abigail's hut, and Alvin is still here, and while we're here, I guess, let's see if we can talk to her about this poison situation. I don't know. We're at least going to try to sell her some of these heads. Well, I guess she's going to pass out on us. Let's wake her ass up. What do you want? Can I ask you something? If you must. Still can't ask her about anything that we haven't already asked her. Alright, well. So we sold her 27 already. Um... Swamp monsters we have, field plants we have. We sell for five orange a pop. I kind of want to farm again. Is this sufficient though? I mean, like, it didn't take me but like 10, 15 minutes to just do it while I was kind of AFK and eating and stuff. But like, I wonder if. I wonder if it's even worth it. I don't know. We have 3,278 orange right now, which is pretty good, I'm guessing. But I maybe want to try to do this one more time before we leave here. I know the last episode I said something about um, I'm thinking that we're nearing the end of this chapter. You know, to be honest with you, we, we really haven't done much. I mean, we got a few of the main missions done. I, we possibly could be nearing it, but I'm in no rush. I'm in, I'm digging this stuff, man. Caroline but is I dead. am wondering. The dogs ate her. Yeah, they did eat her. I'm wondering if we are close. Anyway, so she's done. I guess. I don't know. I guess we can just go to the river now. And turn a bunch of stuff in. Let me look at the journal just to make sure we did do everything. Um, I played Zolt and it was educational. Yeah, yeah. Berengar secret. So Berengar was here, obviously. This Berengar wisher that we don't know about. But it's interesting because I wonder if Berengar... Did you think Berengar led? Because my knowledge of Kaer Morin, No one knows of Kaer Morin. The passages are completely blocked. You have to actively know what you're looking for to get into Caramorn from the mountains. Like it's it's a, it's a landslide. It's blocked by snow and stuff. Especially you. Normally the witchers have to get there before winter because the snows landslide and blocks the entrance completely. So I wonder if Berengar led them to Caramorn uh, because he's like intertwined here somehow, and it's just weird that he wasn't there. And it seems like we're following his footsteps, which is, I don't know, it's all strange. Reverend refuses to let me inside the church to have to earn his trust somehow. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Now that we lit the chapels and it didn't work, it's probably his trust. Get better dice poker every day. I wouldn't mind playing professionals. Well, I guess we're probably done dice poker here. I beat the hell out of Fat Fred. Should look for stronger opponents. Um... Aaron Brawl gave me a mission to go find a man named Coleman and give him a box. I led the fires in the chapels, but as I expected, that didn't do anything good. Okay. Gain the trust of the village's most prominent residents, I should tell the Reverend. And obviously, Vizima's officials are still looking for the professor. Alright, well, I think that's... 
Mysterious Mage. The Mysterious Mage using the Salamander symbol is a skilled alchemist who is researching mutations. Well, Triss said you have to be a pretty skilled person to even do anything with them mutagens. And then... Okay. A little update on Vesna. I don't see what it is. Oh, her card. Well now. Alright, Vesna. she got short hair here, long hair here, but works for me. Alright. Let's get to the Reverend. So I kind of want to meditate the night time. You know what? Let's detour a minute. Since it is daytime. Kinda. Be alert. A wall of rain. Yes? Let's go ahead and buy, um, what is this? Tulips? You know, I'm going to keep these. Let's go ahead and buy more books. Subterranean plants, all right. The Anquitarian even here. Zoltan is here. Oh, oh. let's go to him. I'm forced to sell my goods out here. Is it beneficial to just read to just get all these books? I wonder. Jesus. Let's just buy them all. Screw it. Is there a Canian alchemy? Want monsters, field plants, fear loathing, history of the world. Let's get it. Fairy tales and stories. A conjunction of the spears. Frightener, Ethelene's prophecy. Alright, let's say we have all the books. Let's go ahead and read them. Sell the non-human one. Don't need the Bargus one. The Cataclysm, commonly known as the Conjunction of the Spears, happened one and a half millennia ago, a cosmetic collision of several parallel universes. This disaster left numerous creatures not native to our reality trapped here. For example, ghouls, graveyards, which lack their own ecological niches, are simply relics of the conjunction. The elves claim that humans also arrived in the world during the conjunction. This occurred soon after they managed to destroy their own world. The elves also claim that it was during the conjunction that humans learned to use magic. Of course, these are all vile lies and foul fabrications circulated by humans who will resort to the most malicious slander to justify their claims. Just so you don't, if you don't know, the humans came here, probably through the conjunctions, yes, I believe that, but they also learned magic from the elves, by the way. The elves, uh, taught can't remember how many humans, but they ended up te teaching humans magic, and when the humans learned magic, they destroyed the elves. So I guess that's their repayment of teaching them magic. So it's just like every other damn, every other damn game that we always play. Humans, they're brash. They want power, and as soon as they get power, they destroy everything. Everything that's not normal to them, like elves, non-humans, all that such. Fairy tales and stories. Then the fairy said to the witcher, I will tell you what to do. Put on a pair of iron shoes. Pick up an iron staff. Walk in the iron shoes. 
to the end of the world. Pat the ground before you. Pat the ground before you with a staff and sprinkle it with tears. Walk through the fire and water. Do not stop. Do not look back. And when your shoes wear out and when the iron staff shatters, when the wind and the heat dry your eyes so that you cannot shed another tear, then you will have reached the end of the world's end. You will have found what you seek, what you love, perhaps. And so the witcher walked through the fire and water without looking back, but he took neither iron or shoes nor staff, he took only his witcher sword. He did not heed the words of the fairy, and that's a good thing, because she was an evil fairy. Interesting, that reminds me of the little short story with, uh, not short story, that reminds me of Avalok's encounter with Geralt. It's on the lines of something like that. He had him do a mit, do something for him, for him to release some kind of information to him on the lines of that. But I don't believe he took his Witcher Silver Sword. Anyways, sell that crap. History of the world. When the criminals, when the criminal's stake had been lit and the flames reached her, she began insulting all knights, barons, mages, and counselors gathered in the square in such foul language that they were filled with dread. The wet logs had been stacked to prevent the hag from burning too quickly and provide her a chance to suffer the flames. Dry wood was soon added to the fire to end the execution more swiftly. She must truly have harbored a demon inside her as she uttered not a single scream through the sizzled, though she sizzled fair enough. Instead, she began cursing horribly, an adventure shall be born from my own blood, she cried. From the defiler, defiled elder blood, a destroyer of nations and worlds will rise and shall avenge my torment. Death, death, and revenge upon you and your offspring. That was all she managed to articulate before she perished. Such was the death of Falka, her punishment for innocent blood she had spilled. Okay. Zeracanian alchemy. It gives us something on a king and queen, a bomb and oil. Uh, kind of a waste of money we should not have bought that. Oh well. Recent history. Field Marshal Cohorn's strategy failed when his flanking maneuver was stopped by the heroic Vizeman infantry led by Governor Brondebor. Though they paid dearly for their heroism and blood, while the Vizemans resisted Northgardian's left flank crumbled, some began to flee while others banded into small groups to defend themselves as they were surrounded. The same soon happened on the right when the tenacity of the dwarves and mercenaries finally broke Nilfgaardian's momentum. A loud cry of triumph rose on the battlefield as the hearts of the royal knights filled with a new courage. Nilfgaardian's spirits fell, the men's hands went limp, and our warriors began cutting down, cutting them down. Field Marshal Menno Cohorn realized that the battle was lost. He saw his men being killed and dispersed all around. His officers and knights came to him, leading a fresh horse, urging him to flee to save his life, but the Nilfgaardian marshal, marshal's heart was fearless. It wouldn't be right, he said, refusing the reins. I wouldn't be right to run like a coward on the field on which, under my orders, so many good men had fallen for the emperor. So Menno Kuhorn was a really, uh, Severe um, field marshal man for Nilfgaardian. He was like their big, their big guy. And I'm just gonna sum it up for you. His death, his death was pretty inspiring because he didn't want to leave his troops. And it's funny because he died on the uh, the flank with the dwarves, and none other than our amazing dwarven friend Zoltan Chive was the man that killed him. But they had no idea who he was. They just thought he was another Nilfgaardian all dressed in fancy armor. So Zoltan and uh, his little dwarven company ended up killing Menno Cohorn, not, not even knowing who he was. Subterranean plants. This book describes sewers and green mold, as well as the methods of obtaining alchemical and chemical ingredients. Okay. 
Oh, well, that's that. Is Declan here? He sure as hell is not. I'm gonna get rid of some of this damn jewelry stuff. We have to come back to him anyway, so let's get the hell out of here. We're officially broke and read all the damn books that we can possibly find. Let's go to the damn Reverend. Alright, here we are. The schmuck is outside. Right and early in the morning. Look at him picking flowers. Good on you, Reverend. Speak quickly. Okay, I'm not gonna tell him this yet. I want to enter the city, but I need a letter, a pass of some sort. Only Knights of the Order hold passes, but as chaplain, I have one. May I have it? You, a stranger, a drifter, have you lost your mind? Oh, what a swell guy he is. Speak quickly. I carried the eternal fire to all the chapels. The beasts still haunt us! I told you it wouldn't work. Where's my payment? Ah, yes, your payment. The curse must be stronger than I thought. Doubtless caused by that witch, Abigail. An evil woman. A witch? Maybe she can tell us more. She brought the beast and all other calamities upon us. Perhaps, but I'd rather speak with her first. We must know from whence the beast came. Learn the truth. I will. For three hundred orans. Our community's poor. Perhaps two hundred? So be it. Okay. These guys are really pushing, uh... Severely pushing Abigail, man. As the, um... The tormentor of everything that's going wrong here. Speak quickly. I'm not sure if I'm convinced. Where's the... Oh, here it is. I'd like to bury a man in the crypt beneath the church. You ignited the eternal fire. I'm grateful. So it's a deal? Inside the crypt lies a crumbling sarcophagus. Crumbling? Rather dig a ditch? I'll take the sarcophagus. Cool. I was wondering if we were going to get a chance to get one here, since it was locked. Holy wine? Alright then. Look at this, he's got people just hanging on the wall here. Is that... Good grief. Well, hopefully this works for damn Levarden. Get our damn money. Remember me. I do. You chased me, you and your ghastly hunting party. I do still, though chase isn't the word. Why is that? My task is to see destiny fulfilled. Say I believe you. Will you tell me my destiny? Destiny is a double-edged sword. You are one edge, the other is... Siri? Who is this guy? I wonder if this is, um... The Wild Hunt. Destiny is a double-edged sword. You are one edge and the other is... Edge is death? Um... There is no destiny. Only coincidence, blind chance. <laughs> you doubt destiny. Do you not believe a child marked by destiny will pass through the Witcher's trials? You will give me what you already have, but do not expect. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Obviously. Yes. So no, Witcher. 
that in the future you will surrender unto me the soul of a dear one. It is written, a person both dear and distant, a traveler beyond time. I shall ever be on your trail. Hendrian Va, Salve Leo Turvle. Yep, that's Sparrowhawk, must be. You mock destiny. You mock it and trifle with it. Destiny is a double-edged sword. You are one edge and the other is death? No. It's we who die because of you. Unable to catch you, death contents itself with us. Death stalks you, following in your footsteps, White Wolf. But others die because of you. Leo. Whoa. We're throwing down. Oh, this is a change of uh, events here. I wasn't expecting anything like this. Wrecked, Yulio. What do you have? Red meteorite? You know, I did a little research on this and we'll talk about it in a second. I wanna... Crafting weapons in this game and we'll talk about that in a second after we talk about what the hell just happened. So... Let me look at the journal. I need to know if that was... Yep. King of the Wild Hunt. The King of the Wild Hunt appeared again and a appointed one of his wraiths to fight me. He exploited a weakness. The wraith was the Spectre of Leo. Okay. What really sold it for me is how he told it. He uh, said some stuff in Elven. So this is Sparrowhawk, man. Eridan. King of the Wild Hunt. But this is a Spectre lamination of him. So it's interesting because he said, Yero said that they chased him. So, the end of the books was nothing about the Wild Hunt chasing Geralt, this, that, and the other. So, they're leaving off with Geralt and Yennefer going to that island that Ciri put them on a boat. And they're using that, because it's not confirmed that Geralt even dies. So, they're using that to weave in the Wild Hunt chasing Geralt. But he said that his task is to see destiny fulfilled. So it looks like he wants us to find Siri. Because obviously he cannot find him himself. Or he's looking for Siri as well. So I'm wondering if he wants us to... Well, why... Like, I'm under not understanding the whole amnesia thing, though. You know what I mean? The whole amnesia thing is a bit weird to me. I wonder if he would have the abilities to... Give us our memory back. Because if he's talking about destiny and wants to see destiny fulfilled, then he obviously wants Geralt to find Ciri. So he can... Because he's tracking Geralt. Or he's watching Geralt's moves. So Geralt will find Ciri for him. I don't know. It's a bit confusing. But obviously his goal was to get Ciri. Somehow. And... Watch Geralt's progress of the way. But it's interesting. Pretty cool, man. Never expected us to meet Sparrowhawk, man. Cool. Anyways. I saw Leo's face again this time on a specter. It reminded me that I failed in the cellars of Kermoran. We didn't really fail. It's just that... He just picked Leo, man. If he would have picked us, it would have been different. Anyways. So these, these things here, from what I'm aware is that I was reading that... You have to get three of these, right? Three runes, three different runes. And you have to go to a blacksmith. Give him the runes. And when you give him the runes, there's magically a sword inside of his inventory. We give him the runes, and then we have to pay for the sword. But what I'm reading is that it's not worth it because swords and such that you find in quests, or gifts and quests, are the best items in the game. So there's no point in doing whatever it takes to get a sword that way with the meteorite. It's better to sell them. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I, I don't know. Good freaking grief, man. And what's that? Well, he wanted us to go to Abigail. Let's go talk to Abigail. 
But yeah, it's just interesting, man, how they're, they're weaving this Wild Hunt into the mix. I've already told you guys that the Wild Hunt is an, is an Elder Race. Don't get killed, white They're called the NL Elves, and obviously it's pretty blatant, because he's speaking Elder to us. Just really interesting, man. I love it so far that they incorporate the Wild Hunt, because the Wild Hunt's mysterious. Wild Hunt, Red Riders, whatever you want to call them. A little bit more about Aridin, like, the whole thing with Siri and them, right? I've already told you that they uh, wanted Siri's blood to have a baby so they can open the uh, Gate of Worlds, Portal of Worlds, so they can just port all their people here. Because I guess their world was dying, and they were using the Unicorn blood to do that. But Aridin and Avalok was trying to get Siri to bed their king at the time, and their king didn't like Siri, man. He just couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't get with her. Long story short, Aridin ended up killing him, taking over the uh, the role of the uh, NL's king. He poisoned them or something like that. But Siri ended up escaping, found that unicorn, found a special unicorn, and got the hell out of there. Well, yeah, we can't trust any of them guys, man. If we end up seeing them anywhere, I don't think. I don't know if they'll incorporate them elves in. Maybe they'll just keep it mysterious like this wild hunt thing. Who knows? What do you want? Um... I need to know where the beast came from. Why ask me? Aren't witches wise in the ways of magic? Yes, but this beast is beyond me. Although, I know someone else. Who would that be? The boy Alvin. He's a strong source and a diviner. What he knows we could not hope to imagine. However, if I were to give him a certain potion... Won't it hurt him? No need to fret, he'll be fine. Bring me the petals of five white myrtle and your questions will be answered. Myrtle grows outside the village. If you lack knowledge of herbs, I have this book. It's yours, for a price. Okay, we already know about herbs. So I must bring the witch five white myrtle petals. I should see the witch again. I already, definitely already have them. What do you want? The Reverend believes you summoned the beast. And what do you believe? Nothing yet. What's your side of the story? <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Okay. The witch says she is innocent. Abigail is kind, but her tea is awful. What do you want? I gathered the myrtle petals. Excellent. Now to prepare the potion. How is it made? Interested in witches' secrets, are you? The recipe is yours if you swear to take it to your grave. I swear. Draw close and listen. Blend two ounces of cadaverin with the myrtle petals. Speak your name backwards, turn about three times leftwards, spit into the fire and stir the potion again. Complicated. Ha <laughs> ha. I knew witch's magic would be beyond the mind of a man. Grant me a moment to finish the potion. See you later. Okay. The witch promised me to grow a potion I should return later. Abigail is kind. Come back later. I'm busy. Ew. You're gonna make me do the in and out trick? I would say we should go and do other stuff. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go to Levarden while we're out here. Give him... Tell him about his body being buried. And we'll go back to the witch. See what the hell she is doing with Alvin. She's brewing some kind of potion for Alvin. Interesting. Here, Lavarden, you schmuck. God, grant me patience. What time is it anyway? 8 30 in the morning? I guess it is kind of early still. Well, gotta, yeah. 
Oh, up, Shiny. Still getting jacked up. Look at her. If he's not here by noon, then I don't know. Declan Lavard, there you are, pal. I will not play dice. Sure. I'm broke. Another day, perhaps. A fine opportunity to Any news? Tried that. I buried your friend. Sad to end in some forgotten village. It was a decent burial. Then I can leave with a clear conscience. Forgetting something? Ah, uh, your 200 orans. I will not play dice. I buried Lavard's companion and got paid well. Any new tried that? That's why I'm broke. Sell these rings. Screw it. We need to sell this. We don't need it. Look at all these rings he's got. Alright, let's get on. You know, hold on. Put this in here. What am I supposed to do with these? Sell them into brooches. Guess keep them for now, huh? What's up, Vesna? What can I? Nothing now. Back to the witch. You know what? Let's see if we can sell something. This guy. He's at least talking to us. That thing sold for a lot. We still have 3,000 orans, my friends. Hey, you mind? I'm trying to open the door here. And then close it in our face. Schmuck. Let's see what the hell this witch has for us. So she's gonna use. <laughs> it's like this. This this game is pretty. It's throwing all types of stuff in the books, man. Because we did. If if she's brewing some kind of potion for Alvin to make him prophesize, then we did the same thing for Siri at Kermorin. It's cool because they're throwing all types of little tidbits in. And it's crazy because I uh was hearing that this game was the least um least like the books out of all the games and if this one is the least then the other ones must be extraordinary abigail is kind what do you want is the potion ready yes alvin drink this tastes bitter no complaining now, speak. Abigail, I'm afraid. Why'd they skin the puppy? Why'd they hurt him? He was gentle. He hurt no one. And the girl from outside the village, she screamed horribly, unlike any human. Bad children, torturing the witch's puppy again. Innocent blood. Evil faces twisted by drink and desire. Plow her well. Show her you're a man! Bloodstained gold. The beast is born! Death! The final judgment! The beast has met its end once. It doesn't fear death, it is death! How will you defeat human villainy? With your sword? You who died and still walk amongst the living. Who has summoned me? Enough. This could end badly. Abigail, break the trance. As you wish. By the power of the seven spheres, leave this body. I compel you. Be gone. Oh, I'm sleepy. Mm. Alvin, go to bed. Geralt, another witcher, Berengar, preceded you. He left these missives. Thanks. Farewell. You know, I, I just don't think she summoned the beast. I think it's, uh... I think it's beyond us why this beast is here. I don't, I don't know why the beast is here. They say horrible things, um, 
surface for, for people to do horrible stuff. Obviously, it's almost like, like some sort of fairy tale, man, I feel like I heard before. Human cruelty, or just cruelty in, in, in its own way. Like, obviously... What was the part with the, um, the woman being raped? Who was that? Was it, um... The corpse of that woman that killed herself in the, uh, crypt? I wonder. And that's Mikkel's girlfriend. Or maybe... She was never Mikkel's girlfriend. And he's illusion... Like... One, like, this is deep, my friends. I, I don't know yet. We don't know until all this is done, but she did give us something from Berengar. Berengar's notes on the beast, a hastily written document, probably drafted by the Witcher while he was preparing to fight the beast. First night, 95. KGs of muscle, height around 4.5 feet, fangs of length of a man's thumb, to be avoided, shares characteristics with Alzar's demon. Second night summons Vargas with its howling, has the ability to disappear, probably by assuming spectral or spiritual form, can only be seen with the help of a potion. Third night, highly resistance to iron and signs, walked right over the over three Erden Erdens without noticing. Fourth night, all features of Alzar's demon confirmed. The beast asks a question to who answers correctly, stand a chance of slaying it. Hellhound's soul. Notes containing the formulae for a potion made using the traces left by the hellhound. Oh, a silver talent. Cool. Yeah, I think I think something more is going on here with um all this stuff. She's in the mix somehow because of this dial situation here. This, this, this has got to be Odo, man. It looks like him. I know there's recycling of uh, people in this game, but of the big boy models, at least. So. Caroline is dead. The dogs ate her. Interesting. But yeah, I'm, I can't wait to see how this freaking place, man, comes to a head here. What do you want? Can I ask you something? If you must. Heard of Alzur's demon? Alzur was a mage, a theoretician and practitioner. He traveled broadly, working all the while on a theory of magic. He once encountered a beast immune to all spells. The beast had a lion's body and a man's head. Interesting. When Alzur approached, the beast asked, what animal walks on four legs in the morning, on two at noon, and on three in the evening? Know the answer, Witcher? I do. A powerful mage. Alzer was good at riddles. When he answered correctly, the creature attacked. Alzer was able to defeat it and later learned that in solving its riddle, he had drained it of power. How is this relevant to our green mutts? The beast spoke through Alvin, asking... Who summoned me? The villagers summoned the beast through their vile deeds. You must find the guilty. I see. So, how would you have answered Alzer's demon? She said the person, or whatever it is, walks on two legs at day and three legs in the evening. So obviously it's not a snake. Kiki Moore always walks on four. A monkey, two legs. Fish don't have legs at all. It has to be a man because of two legs during the day and three legs at night. I guess they're, I guess it's talking about his, his, uh, you know, one leg, two leg, and the thing hanging in the middle. Yeah. Is that what we're getting here? A man. Indeed. I hope you fare just as well with this beast. Okay. See you later. All right, well, I think let's look at stuff here. Avin's prophecy is clear. The beast was born of human wickedness and evil. It will continue to haunt the outskirts as long as those who have wronged others remain unpunished. 
prophecies be what they may, Abigail decided to help me in case I need to face the beast sword in hand. So Abigail decided to help me. So she's helping us? So she didn't summon the beast then. She's helping us, or she did and she's trying to make up for it. I have no idea. Being summoned out of human wickedness though, one way or another. She gave me Berengor's note, which may help me defeat the monster. It is time to report what I have learned to the Reverend. I think this is it, though. It feels like it's coming to a head here. I'm guessing when we go back to the Reverend and report to us, and we're going to also report that we, um... Um... I'm going to report that we got everyone's trust, too, to um, next episode, because I want to take this little break between recordings and do a little bit more um what is it called do a little bit more uh Foreman of the Barga skull so anyways my friends take it easy out there until next episode stay safe see y'all then